sick of doing this work. No, I'm not really. Right then, YouTubes. That's the Range Rover Velar, all masked up and ready to paint. So I'll give you a quick look. Um, so yeah, it's all masked up, ready to paint. Uh, the doors have been finished in 500 grit. So I blocked them with 320 grit and then guide coated it and finished it off in 500 grit. And the blend areas, uh, 800 grit, dual action sander, 1000 grit soft pad, hand pads, and gray scotch wet. So there's a few little breakthroughs on this. Obviously this had some nasty paint on it. The paint was a little bit chewy, um, felt a little bit gummy when I was rubbing it down. It was blocking up the, clogging up the sandpaper. Um, so I was in two minds whether to two pack prime these doors just to seal it in, you know, just a couple of thin coats, two or three thin coats, and then obviously block all that down and prep it. But I probably end up breaking through again on edges and stuff like that. You may start losing some of your line sharpness on your lines as well. There's no repairs that I can see on these doors, which is um, which is good. But there's a few breakthroughs um, and a few layers where I've had to feather out where they've left everything on and masked up, and that's the trouble. You know, some things you will you know you will want to leave on because you've got to weigh it up whether it's worth the hassle of stripping it out and try and mask it as best you can but when stuff is quite straightforward to strip out like a lot of scraper moldings on cars are quite straightforward it's not too much effort to take a door card off on most cars and get the mirrors off um so yeah that you end up with build up of paint obviously not being able to key up to it properly and then later down the line causes issues of it flaking, peeling, and it just looks untidy. So yeah, everything got stripped off apart from the handle mechanisms on this. And um, yeah, where I've had to feather out, um, you can see there's a few sort of layers, but you can't feel anything. It all feels good. And I probably could maybe just put blender, blender coat over it. Cause that sort of seals in a little bit, fills in little micro scratches and then base coat, base coat it, and then obviously clear coat it. But I've decided I'm just gonna put a coat of wet on wet over these doors. Um, so when it's all degreased and blown off, I'm gonna mask off the quarter panel, mask off the wing, and put one coat of Meeper 4 plus one, wet on wet on there, just a quick wet coat, um, just to seal it in. Um, being silver as well, if it, water base is pretty good, what base coat is pretty good for going over old coatings where it hasn't got solvent in it. Um, there's not really any risk of it pickling or reacting with any previous coats under there. You know, solvent base coat, um, there's always a risk, especially if you put it on heavy, of it melting that paint that's underneath and it reacting and, and frying up and, and pickling. Um, but silver, you know, if it does pick up any, any edges, um, silver shows everything in the base coat, micro scratches, everything. Um, so I'm just gonna put a coat of wet on wet over those doors just to seal it in. And if it does pick up on the wet on wet, at least I've got, um, you know, a bit of scope to maybe nib it down a little bit um, before I base coat it. So yeah, that's it. So it'll have a coat, coat of wet on wet on the doors. And then when that's gone off, I put blender coat over the blend panels, the wing and the quarter panel, and then the usual procedure. Two and a half coats of base coat, silver should cover really well, and then two coats of clear coat. Uh, so yes, yeah, Meepa, Meepa water base for the base coat as usual. Um, the usual guns, but I'll tell you anyway quickly. So that works gonna go on with my 1500 B 1.4 RP, and that's gonna go on with two, I'll put on the back 2.2 bar. It is a bit finer, so it's a little bit flatter. And then base coat is going to go on with the X5500, that's got 1.2 high setup, HLP. And clear coat, I'll make it on with my CC. I'm using my CC on this one. I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, I will. I'll put it on with my CC. Um, so, yeah, clear coat I'll be using is MEPA CC9. And um, with HS25 hardener, so yeah. That'd be the clear coat gun. And that's the clear coat I'm putting on it, MEPA CC9. So, that being said, I'll, um, I'll get it all degreased blown off and tacked off and then I'll mask them the blend panels off put the 
uh, the wet on wet on there and then while that's curing I'll mix the colour. There was one shade of this colour, it looked pretty good on the colour chip so I didn't bother going down the spectro route. As, as we're blending it and there's just a little bit edge to edge to the bonnet but the colour chip looks alright to that so being one shade hopefully it should it should match okay um, so yeah that's it uh, I'll get it all degreased blown off and tacked off and we'll get some paint on it right then YouTubes thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the channel uh, so yeah this video is the second part to the first part of rectifying a bad paint job on a Range Rover Velar. So if you haven't seen this first part, um, yeah, go and check that out. Um, so yeah, this second part's the, the painting stage. Um, so yeah, in the first part, we've got it all prepped and uh, and masked up. So yeah, to start off with, I'm gonna put some wet on wet on them doors. So I've ma masked off the, the, the blend panels, the adjacent panels, um, just to keep any overspray off of them. I mean, you could you could run a bit of wet on wet into those blend panels, um, but you run the risk risk of um, obviously having a little bit of a rough edge. You can obviously melt it in with um, with fade out thinners, or you can give it a little just a little nib. Um, but yeah, I decided just to just to wet on wet the doors and keep keep them separate the blend panels. So yeah, one coat of uh, Mepa four plus one the wet on wet mixing ratio with my 1500B with RP with a 1.4 setup and um yeah just try and put a nice nice wet coat on there obviously not too he heavy neither um and I just turn the pressure up a bit higher uh, just to just to sort of atomize it a little bit better and try and get get the wet on wet a bit flatter it's okay this me before plus one it's really quick drying um so it's a it's a quick quick wet on wet um, <clears throat> and it's okay it's not a designated wet on wet and I, I just find that the wet on wets that are part of a, a, just a different mixing ratio or you know on a high build primer just with a different mixing ratio I find they're never as good as the designated wet on wet um, so yeah the designated wet on wet for me is F37 and um, it's, it is probably more suited to, to new panels but this is fine for this job for sealing in them doors so what I do next is um, when I, whenever I do a job of wet and wet I don't mix the colour beforehand I go and get the wet and wet on there first so it gives me plenty of top dry time the, you know the longer you can leave wet and wet really the better um, for minimising um, you know any any dye back on on your clear coat sometimes that can happen with wet on wet especially if you want to put a nice wet coat on there you just want to make sure it's thoroughly dry you get plenty plenty big enough window for adhesion uh on most wet on wet so yeah next i mix my color up while that's drying obviously clean the gun out uh that takes a bit of time so i've already mixed the color let's have plenty of time to dry i just leave it at, at the spraying temperature around around 22 degrees um, and leave that and it's about a good te 10 to 15 minutes mixing the colour and cleaning the gun so there's plenty of time for that 4 plus 1 and uh, now I'm ready for the blender so yeah I just tried that tried that pot on the gun and obviously it gets reused and uh, they're only plastic the lids and they've got the same inter interlocking shape as what the starter pots have so they go straight in with no adapters obviously and um, yeah it was just it wasn't locking in very well so yeah risk of it leaking or even coming off the pot so yeah just refresh the the blender pot and now i'm ready for the blender coat so took the masking off the adjacent panels um there's a couple of little nibs in the door uh that i just quickly nibbed out uh, a little bit of overspray creep through the masking as well into the wing so give that a little nib and um yeah i'm going to put blender coat over the whole lot you can just put the blender coat in your blend areas so the blend panels um uh, you know what helps what blender coat does how it helps you aid your blending is um <clears throat> in blend areas on metallics and silvers it can highlight uh your prepping scratches because because obviously the real thin dry coat that's going on there and that's that can sort of show and show where your blend is 
Um, so that's one of the things that Blender Coat will do to, to aid your blending, whereas it fills in all the micro scratches and the rest of it's magic. I don't know what, what, <laughs> what other things it does. Um, so yeah, but I put it over the, over the whole job on this because um yeah like so a couple of nib throughs that i nibbed out with um with 800 grit dry um but yeah just it's you know it's like a transparent base coat really it's a little bit different on the meat one it isn't um don't mix any water thinner with it and um yeah it is a different product to the you know different material to the to the um to the water base coat some blenders are you know just a transparent base coat um, so yeah I'll just put a coat of it over the over the whole job it's just one sort of quick thin coat normal pressure two bar it's, it doesn't have to be on there heavy or anything like that it's completely transparent and I'm um, yeah just put it on there quick it's it's ready for use out of the pot the Meeper one um, so yeah no thinners and it is quite a, a thin product it's not it's not very thick like some some water-based products can be a bit thick um, this isn't it's it's really thin so it's easy to put a wet coat on there I, I have had it go a little bit funny on me where putting it on too heavy in a blend area it sort of looks a little bit rain rainbowy looking um, so yeah I'll just make sure I get a quick quick even medium wet coat over over the whole job i normally put it over the whole job unless there's a area where i've got to do some fade, fading out on the clear and um yeah don't really need to turn the temperature up in the booth to to dry to dry this blender coat it it dries really quick three or four minutes with a handheld blower and um and it's all dry ready for the base coat so yeah i don't have to clean the gun out put the color straight on onto it just empty what's in the gun back into the start part and then put the base coat straight on so uh, the normal application for what I do with with me per water base is um, you need to put half coat on first um, so half coat at two bar um, that's what they recommend and then there's two ways really you can do it you can either do it then it's, if it's a normal covering colour you can do it a single coat and so dry each one through or you can do a double coat which is what I do which is um, sort of it's not two full wet coats back to back as a double header but it's sort of um, I'd say two medium wet coats on top of each other um, on the second pass uh, you just sort of pull back a little bit just to even out the metallics and that works fine for me it's a little bit longer drying but it's only one one lot of drying for me then because you you have to dry out the first coat regardless the foot the half coat which doesn't take long to dry because there's not a lot of product on there um, but I find if I'm doing it doing it as a two single coat I've got to keep changing my temperature in the booth because as a single coat um, it takes quite a while at 20 odd degrees uh, to get that dry uh, so I'd rather just get the double coat done which is what I'm doing now um, do it as a wet on wet as long as there's a colour that you know it's going to be covered in two coats after the half coat then you can do this otherwise you will have to do an, an additional single coat if you have to do more than two and a half coats so yeah so this is the second pass on it and what I do then is I just have one lot of drying where I let all the overspray clear, put it on bake so it's a bit more economical on bake then where I'm not dragging uh, a different temperature air into the booth and then extracting it, I'm recycling the air and I just put it at about 40, 45 degrees, let the heat get in there and go and blow it manually with a uh, with one of my blow dryers and um, yeah it doesn't take too long, it's okay that that procedure works for me and um, I haven't had any issues um, for a while now. I did initially because uh, I wasn't trying it out properly. Um, I was using the blade type blowers and they, they were just skinning over the base coat. I didn't have any trouble with the blade ones with Octral, but I did on this system. And that's what it ended up being. I wasn't dehy dehydrating the water base. I was skinning it over and it was looking matte and even feeling okay on the tap rag. 
um, but it was skinning over and I weren't it wasn't trying out properly so yeah I've had to invest in some decent dryers um, I've got the SATA Blowjet 2 which is is really good it, you, it, work, it, it increases the volume of the air uh, massively so you don't have to have a lot of pressure in that dry gun um, just have it uh, at, at, gun, at gun pressure and um, yeah and it will dry out and then the A and I is a bit higher but you've got the option of um, of uh, increasing the temperature that you're pulling into it uh, which is it's a real good feature it, it does work definitely does work but you do lose air volume uh, in the heating mode so you won't get full air volume but you will get warmer air than what's uh, being dragged into it so um, yeah they do work and I find jobs my jobs are cleaner with uh, with the dryers with the filter on the blade ones used to kick up a lot of a lot of dirt I used to find so I've definitely got cleaner jobs with the with the um, with the filter type uh, blow dryers so yeah that's all the base coat on there like I say just explained how how I dry it all out after let it cool down especially on silvers let it get, get down to below 25 degrees uh, back on spray and then uh, yeah this you sort of give it one or two drop coats really depending on the color and uh, you can sort of you can make you you can make your color shade slightly lighter if you need to with a with an extra drop coat um, to drop coat it all sort of almost double the distance at one bar let it full trigger most of it feathering the trigger in the blend areas a bit but most of it try and get full trigger over your blend and just let it all settle on there and then just leave it to let it dry naturally don't really want to blow it because you can move metallic route around a little bit they say and you obviously you change the angle of it a little bit so yeah this one I'll give it a second one um, just to even it up a little bit more um, I probably wouldn't recommend more than two because it you know the, the metallic can start bunching then and then you could have a bit of you know base coat gravel showing through in your clear coat and um, you might be able to sort of see your, your blends a little a little bit more so yeah just flicking up over it just to even it all up and um, yeah that's it good enough just let it let it dry naturally So clear coat's all mixed now, uh, just filling up the SART pot, the larger SART pot for this one. Um, and uh, I decided to use my CC, and to be honest with you, I, w I regretted it afterwards. I wish I'd use uh, my 1.20. I must admit, I'm, I'm not enjoying the CC gun as much as I did when I first started using it. It's sort of it's not really suiting my spraying style in a way um, I'm having to slow down quite a bit especially I don't know it's it, there's fairly large panels on this and down the sides you know some it's, it's an have you know a substantial size job and then with the slowness of it yeah I'm not getting the desired results I, I want really it's okay um, the O just I find where it puts a little bit more product on on that I know it's um, probably uh, not as user friendly the O because um, you, you know with it putting more product on there then you run the risk of overloading it and maybe getting some runs in it and stuff but um, I'm finding with the CC like I say where this job was a bit bigger and having the wet and wet on the doors I want I should have use the over really to get just a bit more clear on there to compensate for any any shrink back and um, yeah I find that I'm sort of having to go back over it a bit because where I'm making my, where I'm sort of not going at my speed that I'm sort of um, 
on automatic pilot with where I'm actually you know slowing it down and adjusting it um, I'm sort of a bit irregular on the speed so I, I look at some areas of panels when I've gone over it and some of it's uh, to where I want it finish wise and then others need a little bit more on there so I'm finding myself going back over uh, areas which that happens anyway you know it's, um, regardless of the gun um, not every time that you know, me personally anyway I, don't, I can't speak for any, any other painters but me personally um, sometimes I, I get through a panel and I check it before I move on and um, there'd be a bit of, I need a bit more product on there so um, yeah like I say if the CC yeah I'm not enjoying it as much that's all I'm going to say um, so yeah I've been doing a few jobs with a 1.20 O setup now again, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's a lot faster gun with with the wet spot in the middle as well. Um, yeah, you it you can uh, you can apply a decent amount of product on there, but you do run the risk of uh, build ups and stuff and and runs obviously. Meeper CC9, and um, I've been playing a, again, like I've just mentioned about my guns. Uh, I'm sort of changing a little bit. Like I say, I'm not enjoying the CC as much, not getting the desired results I want with it as much. And uh, I've started playing about with the uh, only on the CC9 clear coat that I use because the other clear coat CX2 doesn't require any thinners, but this has got up to 5%, and you can. You can adjust it 1% at a time if you mix it off of the scales on the, on the software on the computer. So it gives you a good reference point to, if you don't put as much thin as in, you've got that accuracy to replicate that time and time again. Instead of doing it on the measurements on the cut, it's not gonna be, you're gonna be a bit irregular, especially mixing small amounts to distinguish between having a bit less thinners and a bit more thinners in your clear coat so that's why I do it weight wise so you can adjust it and, and replicate that again so I've been putting I normally put the full 5% in which they say but lately I've been uh, playing around with with 3% and 4% and um, it does make it a little bit peelier which you'd expect that um, but also, I haven't had it often. Uh, sometimes, you know, clear coats with thinners in, you're going to get a little bit of haze off of the it where the thinners has evaporated from it. If it goes on bake a little bit too quick, sometimes you just get sometimes you get a little bit of a haze off of it. And the clear coats that don't have thinners in don't seem to do that. Um, so I have noticed, it, yeah, it can be a little bit peelier with the um, with the obviously having less thinners in it um, but I think the gloss looks a little bit better the depth of gloss definite um, with you know with less thinners to evaporate out of it but I I haven't really had any issues with this CC9 like that like I say sometimes you can notice a, a bit of it in there with the full 5% thinners in there um, but I do give it a good time CC9 definitely needs a bake. I could air dry the CX2 and that, no problem. But um, yes, it definitely needs a bake. Um, but I'd make sure I'd give it a good, it's probably 15 minutes before I put it on bake. And I do do it at 60 degrees. My beef gets up to temperature quite quickly. It's, it's pretty decent. With the less thinners in there, it just seems, it's a bit of a chunkier orange peel. It's, uh, it doesn't flow as well but the, the depth of gloss looks better, I find. Um, cool, I've been waffling on a bit on this one, haven't I? Um, so it's the end of the video anyway. Um, thanks for sticking around this long and watching it and um, putting up with all my waffle. And I um, hope you enjoyed 
this video series and uh yeah i'll see you again in the next one thanks for watching everyone really appreciate it see you soon Right then YouTube, that's the Range Rover Velar all fitted up and polished and finished. I didn't get any footage of the of the refit. Um, it's basically opposite to what we've done in the stripping and um, and the polishing. There's only a couple of nibs to do really, so I'll, I'll give you a look. I just managed to find a break in the rain, so the, it's dark and cloudy and horrible. Um, but yeah, it stopped raining, so I, I can show you it outside. Um, and yeah, it's all gone. It's all gone all right. It come out, come out all right. Blended in well. No problems with the blending. Finish is pretty decent. Obviously, I wet and wetted them doors. And um, yeah, all the colours, colours matched okay. There's a little bit edge to edge here. Uh, it's pretty, pretty decent. It's uh, barely noticeable. And um, yeah, it all went okay. Sometimes you can find. I find with. Um, if you wet and wet a panel with silvers, silvers especially in high uh, colours with high aluminium content, you're obviously going to have a, some sort of bit of texture on the wet on wet. So if you do a panel with wet on wet on it and then a panel next to it that hasn't, you, you're going to see a little bit of grain in the, you know, a little bit of texture in the base coat. Um, sometimes that can you know if you really look at it closely you can notice it but it's not too bad it's it's not the best that wet and wet the mipa four plus one version of it you know the wet or wet mixing ratio of that primer um you normally find the the wet and wets that uh um you know they're part of a diff just a different mixing ratio on on a high build primer. they're never never as good as a designated wet and wet um, but it's it's quick that four plus one. It dries really quick, and it is fairly smooth. Again, application can change it, and um, yeah, yeah, it was a good job that um, yeah we managed to get away with wet and wetting those doors, and um, yeah, I'm pleased with the results. It's all come out all right, and um, yeah, it blended in well. I do find I've used quite a few water-based coats over my time, and uh, some some are not as good as others. Some are, are trickier to blend. But I do find with the with the Meeper water base, um, that's been one of the real pluses since I've got gone on this system. So I went on it from Octrol, and Octrol was a bit of a pig to blend. Always could see it really, um, but this blends really easily. Um, sort of the trick is sometimes as well is not to overblend it. So the more you try, try and flick it out, the more you try and blend it. You, bunching up loads more metallic next to each other and uh and that that can you know highlight where you've blended but as long as you use that blender coat on this system and um yeah 
do a bit of flicking out uh, when you're doing the wet applications and then um, and then sort of go over it with your with your one bar drop coat it it blends in really nice I've, I've not not really had any issues with the metallic colors anyway with blending I have with some of the pastel colors uh, but yeah I, I haven't haven't really had any issues a little bit of trial and error at the beginning but yeah I'm uh, yeah I'm happy with the way it blends it's, sometimes that can be a problem on some paint systems with, with silvers and stuff that um, yeah the w when you get to these type of colors silvers and high aluminium colors that uh, the blending can be can be an issue but no all blended in well so yeah I know you can't can't see much in this light um, But yeah, that's it. Door handles, we cleaned up all the overspray out of them. They look a lot better now. A lot, uh, you know, it doesn't look so much like it's been painted now. And um, yeah, had a few issues with the door card. It had all been off from the previous paintwork and there was a couple of things that weren't connected in there. They'd broken some things in there, had all the wrong door clips on it. So yeah, that was a little bit of a mission, getting some decent, clips that would fit and getting getting it to fit properly um yeah it's a bit of a mess in there but there we go it's all sorted anyway so yeah we've got a bit of a range rover theme going on this week we've got this one here we've got another one here and uh we've got another one in the booth as well um <laughs> purely coincidental we didn't plan it like that um it just seemed to happen like that but there you go it's Range Rover week this week. So anyway, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate everyone watching my videos. And um, yeah, please like, share and subscribe and all that good stuff. And we'll see you again in the next one. Look after yourselves, everyone. Cheers.